there. So it's been a bit rainy and a bit miserable here today. So I was being a bit wistful and I picked up some old pictures and I was just sorting through them, sort of old kind of family photos. And I came across some photos of the innocent little me and um, it kind of brought joy and tears to me to look at them and to think kind of that you could never have imagined the journey that she would go on to get to where I've got to today. And you certainly couldn't have imagined that she would go from this child that in many of those pictures was you know, cheerily eating an ice cream or digging into a slice of birthday cake or enjoying a sandwich in the garden with her brother, you wouldn't think that she was the child that then would succumb to an eating disorder which would destroy much of her life and her family's life for 20 years. Um, it made me feel quite melancholy in some ways, but it also reminded me of how important she, little Debbie, really was in my recovery journey. And I thought I'd share it with you today just because it is, for some people, quite a useful resource to put out of your toolbox as you're struggling your way through getting restored from anorexia or any other eating disorder behaviour. And for me, that was about needing to externalise the person for whom I was choosing to recover. Now, I'm sure every psychologist would say that you have to do it for yourself first. So it's like, um, you know, the number one rule of wanting to date somebody, isn't it? That, you know, you have to love yourself first. Well, certainly with eating disorder recovery, you have to want to do it for yourself as much as you might want to get well for your parents or your partner or your children. But for me, when it came down to kind of those everyday moments where I was feeling somewhat challenged about eating something more, resting more or just giving myself an easier time, I had to keep pulling it back and saying, what would you want for little Debbie? What would you want for that inner child? What would you want to be doing, saying, how would you want to be behaving in a way that supported that child fully? And it was easier for me to make those extra decisions that were becoming really quite, at times quite traumatic, but certainly quite a struggle. So over that you know, the choice to go around the supermarket and not to buy skimmed milk, but to buy kind of, you know, full fat milk or to have a second portion of lasagna or to have a pudding and to spontaneously say yes to going out for a pizza with friends and not feeling freaked out about it. Or so just deciding to rest on the sofa because you're feeling a little bit weary and not giving yourself a hard time about the number of steps you've done. For me, I had to bring all those decisions and behaviours back to saying, oh yes, but would you make that happen for your inner child, your younger you? Would you do this to that person? Now, whether you do that to kind of relate to the um, younger you, the inner you, or whether you look to do it to reflect on somebody that you know, your own child or your niece or your nephew or your grandchild or a sibling, Sometimes, because we're not great at self-care and self-love at the times that we start to want to recover from our eating disorder, it can help to say, I'm thinking about whether I would choose to do this to that child, that other person. And of course, if the answer is no, and of course, you know, you wouldn't deprive that youngster of the right milk on the cereal or the second portion of whatever, or the opportunity to have the dessert or the opportunity to lay on the sofa and have a cuddle with you because they were desperately tired. You wouldn't deprive that child of doing so. So why would you deprive yourself? You're not in some kind of competition to be the most cruel person you can be to yourself. Get well, even if that means you have to externalize that focus of love for a bit. Okay, take care.